I don't know if you're all familiar with the fear address pattern by Lisol and Company, but you are going to want to make this garment. Hi, I'm Diane with Sobatique, and today we're going to go through the process of combination pattern review and educational on making the fear address. And we're going to make it out of our new, <laughs> very new, and I absolutely love it, our batik linen. And um, for those of you who do follow us on social media, I have been really enjoying the process of making various garments using our new linen. And um, I made my first garment, <laughs> which is the fear address, from our solid black tuxedo is the color of the batik linen. And I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures here so that you can see what it looks like on, as well as, um, oh, I don't know, just on. So you'll see some close-ups of the image of the, of the garment, some shoulder shots, and um, I just really want you to see this particular garment and how it looks with the linen. And also, it's gonna show you how simple yet stylish the fear dress is. Let's talk a little bit about the pattern. The fear dress is a pattern that is both a dress and a top. I have to make the top next because I think it's gonna be super fun for our summer season. It is size ranges zero to 20. Now, when I say zero to 20, always know what I mean for you to do is take a look at the pattern and take a look at the body measurements as well as the finished measurements. Both of the body measurements and the finished measurements are on the back of this pattern. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the differences between the two and how much ease there is in this garment to help you decide what size you should make for yourself. But here are some of the measurements. The bust of a zero is size 32 and a half. That's the measurements. The bust of a 20, just so you can see this range, is a 46. The ease on these, now remember, the other thing about this pattern and all the Liesl patterns that I've worked with so far, I shouldn't always say all, but the ones that I've worked with so far are um, multiple cup sizes to really give you that flexibility of creating the garment that fits your style and your body size best. So we have an A, B cup, we have a C cup, and we have a D cup. And so work with the pattern. It shows you how to measure above your bust line and your fullest bust, understand the difference between the two to determine which cup size. And we can go into that on another video, but. For now, just know that this gives you that flexibility. The um, finished garment size for a zero is a 35 bust, and that's an AB to a 49. So when you think about this, this particular garment has about three inches of ease um, around your bust area. So that is going to be a touch point. And then I always think about my hips as my touch point. And in between the two is my waist. I'm going to make sure it's in between the two. Otherwise I'm going to grade a little bit different. Um, and this particular garment is kind of an A shape from the underarm to your hem. Uh, not a dramatic, it's very slight, but yet it's not, I don't believe it's intended to be a shape, like an hourglass shape. You can create that if you'd like, but um, follow the pattern, see how it looks on you first or how you think it's gonna you know, envision it on you and then take it from there. But the hips, let's talk a little bit about the hips from a zero to a 20. The hip on a zero is a 35 and the hip on a 20 is a 48 and a half. The finished measurements for the hip on a zero are 39 and a quarter. So that is giving you four inches of ease around your hip area. And then for a 20, it is 53 and a quarter. So again, it's giving you almost five inches of ease, 
which is pretty significant, but yet, let me tell you, when you're making this out of linen and it feels so good anyway, the last thing I really wanna have is something that is so snug when I sit down or stand up or, or move around or bend. So I like that between three inches to five inches of ease at my hip. So I will base all of my cutting measurements on my finished garment measurements for what I believe fits me best. Now, from a bust perspective, when we're talking about ease, I like two inches of ease. Two, if I go to three inches, I feel like it's too big and I'm going to get too much fullness underneath my arm. So give that some consideration as well. But so what I ended up doing is I created a garment um, layout for myself that at the top is, I believe it is a... 10 and I grade down to a 14 at the hip. So I am creating kind of a slight um, hourglass shape to it. And the one other thing to remember about this pattern um, is that there are side pockets when you're making the dress. So ha having side pockets too tight on you is uh, never a good thing, um, especially if you put something in them. So um, I would suggest that you keep with that ease of four inches to five inches just to be able to feel comfortable in this dress because that is exactly the purpose of this dress. So that's a little bit about the pattern and um, um, let's talk about the fabric. The fabric I used for my first sample of this garment is, I think I mentioned it, is our batik linen. Our batik linen is 50, we advertise it as 54 inches on our website. It is 58 inches. And um, so use any pattern that does say 57, 58 inches for a woven fabric. It will work fine. Um, we started very conservative just to make sure that everything was gonna come in um, as we intended the production to be. So definitely go ahead and use your 57 inch wide. Uh, woven chart when you lay out your pattern. But the fabric I'm going to use today, and you'll see that I've already kind of started doing that, but I am going to use another linen because why not? And this linen is our Phoenix motif and it is um, the color of lake and it has to be one of my favorites. Um, and I have to honestly tell you the lake colorway in general for our fabrics seems to be your favorite as well. So, um, fantastic. So I'm really excited to make another dress out of our linen and I am, let me talk about the yardages really, really quick. I believe what I cut here for this particular garment is two yards. Um, yes, two yards just to make sure I have everything. And that is 58 inch wide fabric for, and I'm starting with a 12, so two yards of fabric. And that's very understandable because you're dealing with length. And if you are able, depending on your size, and I'm gonna make sure that I understand what will happen at the 20 uh, size of this pattern, as to whether or not you can continue to lay your patterns side by side on the 58 inch wide fabric. And I believe you can, but I will verify that. So the fabric, I pre-washed it. I did um, take it out of the dryer before it was completely dry, so it was damp. I could have probably laid this out without pressing it, but I did take a moment while it was damp to press it to make sure that I don't have any issues when I lay out my pattern. So those are the processes that I go through and I use Synthropol in my washing machine and everything turns out beautiful. It gets rid of all that surface um, color and dye and wax that is always there when you get it from the store, always. So the next thing we're going to do is I wanna to talk to you a little bit about thread. With our um, batik linen, I am going to use so fine thread and as usual I mix and match all my colors because <laughs> I like to see all the colors that are in the fabric in my thread and then I find my most um, happy thread to put on the 
outside when I'm top stitching using my sewing machine. So these are going to go into my serger and I'm going to use a three thread overlock to secure all of my edges because when we're dealing with linen, there's ravel. A linen is not a tightly woven fabric. It is a loose weave. Our linen is 4.8 ounces um, per square yard. And so you are gonna get a little bit of that raveling. And if you see, once you get your linen, you will see the salvage edge has a uh, finishing, it's kind of a securing edge of it. You'll, you'll know what the salvage, ed salvage edge is and there's fraying and this is what's going to happen if we don't secure our edges and um i'm going to use my serger to do that along the way some seams i actually seam with my serger some i just simply seam or um finish my edges of my fabric before i use my sewing machine to actually create my seam those are just judgment calls and I can talk you through what I do for each one of my pattern pieces here for this particular garment. Um, I think that's it. So let's start laying out the fabric. I'm going to get everything positioned. Nothing magical about that. The um, pattern that comes or the tissue that comes with your pattern has a wonderful layout guideline um, to, sh to show you how to lay everything out if you have 45 inch wide fabric or your 58 inch wide fabric and follow that if you wish. I am somebody who does my own thing just because I've been sewing so long. <laughs> so I lay it out just to make sure that I can use every inch of my fabric. Um, and I think that's it. So let's get cutting and we're going to get sewing. Let's talk a little bit about the garment and what we're going to really kind of hone in on when we're stitching this up. I really want to focus on a few of the nuances of this pattern. And one of them will be the yoke, the front and the back yoke, and how that's attached to the garment. I also want to talk a little bit about the front facing and the pockets themselves. But everything else about this garment is simple sewing, and simple hemming, simple seam finishing. And I'll share a little bit about all those things along the way, but we're gonna talk about the yoke and how to put that on, the pockets and the front facing. All of the pieces of the garment are all cut out and I took some time to interface. So I fused the interfacing on the back of the front facing. I also added it said to cut out a rectangle and fuse it to the back side of the front of your garment. I angled it slightly because having made this garment before, if you fuse a rectangle on, you're going to see the fusing underneath the facing of the front facing here. So make sure that you shape your fusible before you fuse it to the inside of the garment. The other place that we need to add fusible is each one of the side seams where the pocket is attached. And so I've added the fusible here. It's just a one inch strip that is right over where our pocket will be attached on the two sides of the front of the garment and the two sides of the back of the garment as well. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch up the darts and I'm also going to serge the edges of the four pockets. And the reason I'm going to do that ahead of time is this is, like I said, I'm working with the linen and the minute we put these, attach these to our garment, it makes it very difficult to serge around the outside edge or to do anything to finish the edges of the pocket. So just take a minute, individually, one by one, serge your edges of these with a simple three thread overlock or a zigzag stitch or something to um, finish those. 
it's time to attach the front facing to the front of our garment. And here's the facing, and we've already finished the edge of that facing. And remember, we also put on this side, which is the wrong side of our garment, we added fusible to keep it a little bit more together here. And it's great to have that so none of the fabric gets stretched out of whack. And I also transferred the markings to the dot, which is in the center V of our neckline. So what we need to do is position these right on top of another. And the one thing that I typically do is I will take my pin right into that dot and flip this over and try to make sure I get that exactly on my marking on the wrong side of the garment. So now I can just use my pin to secure those together. Once that dot's in place, then I just simply work my way up to the front. Now I have to keep this straight because I don't want this to get stretched on the bottom here. And then I start pinning. So I wanna make sure that my top facing matches along the edge and there is a notch right there, a tailor's notch to make sure that we have our facing in the right position there. So pin along the edges and I'm gonna make sure that I have that right there. And then I'm gonna show you one little thing that I always make sure of too, because there is a deep V here and we're going to stitch a quarter inch away from the edge following that marking that was on the front of our um, front facing. And let's make sure that's level there it is and I just put a few pins in here just to make sure it's secure then what I want to make sure is that my V is going to stitch through the right portion of the V on the front of the garment so I just pin along my stitch line right here and right here I just want to make sure that I'm in the right spot on this side and that I haven't missed any seams and I'm good to go so Time to go stitch this up. And again, it's a quarter inch all the way down to the point. But what I'm gonna do first here is move this pin out of the way, keeping everything straight. So I'm gonna stitch along here and then pivot and change your thread stitch length to be extremely tiny as you go down into this V point and then come back up again, and then change it back to a traditional stitch width, or length, I should say, coming all the way back to the uh, other edge of the facing. This will make it super easy when we need to snip close to that V before turning our facing inside out. I finished the stitching right here. And I already took a moment <laughs> to cut through the facing here and just make sure that you are getting as close with some really, really sharp scissors as you possibly can to that center point. And I think that is the reason that it's really a great idea to use teeny, teeny, tiny stitches around that edge right there so that it keeps the threads intact. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to press our seam edge here towards the facing and under stitch under stitch all the way along here until you get it says in the pattern here about an inch away but go as far as you feel comfortable on both sides so we'll get a really nice edge here by under stitching this seam to the facing and then press the next thing we'll do is we'll press it just ever so slightly rolling that facing inside so that we don't see the edge it's time to work on the front and back yokes and what we're going to do i already have these situated but we're going to take the back yoke and attach both front yokes right at the seam up here and once we have stitched 
this down using our half inch seam allowance. We're going to trim that down to a quarter inch and press it open. The next thing we're going to do with the yoke is we're going to um, fold up one of the yokes, which is going to be the outside of the garment. We're going to fold a half an inch on all three straight edges here. And I'm actually going to show you this little tool. Um, the instructions for the pattern tell us to stitch a half an inch with a basting stitch, use that as our fold line to press. Well, I really have gotten used to this um, hot ruler, which is from Clover, um, and I don't wanna do an infomercial, but it is a great tool, and I'm gonna show you how I use it. It is kind of a fabric-y, it's kind of stiff, but it's, it's covered with some fabric, and it's for pressing. And you simply lay it down on your fabric, and I kind of judge my half an inch here Pull up the fabric and use your iron to then create that crease right at the edge. Let me move this a little bit and you can move it along as you go. So you end up with a very crisp, and I just let it sit there for just a minute. If I had one of those, um, my pressing thing, I would use that here, but it just, um, you move that away and you have an amazingly crisp folded edge. So these are definitely worthwhile and it saves a step of, of stitching your basting stitch here before you do the pressing. So I'm going to finish doing this for the second shoulder and the entire back of the outside yoke and then we're going to put these two together. And our next step here is to, with right sides together, we're going to place our yokes I guess I just said that, right sides together. And we're going to match our side seams right here. And that will be your shoulder seam. So we'll match that. We'll put a pin right in there. And let me grab my pins. As well as placing everything. I like to put that right through the center. In alignment here and it's going to be your outer yoke here has the pre has the pressed edge so we want to make sure that we're a half an inch away from the outer edge of the inside yoke place our pin there because we're going to stitch this down in place so that when we turn the yoke right side out we'll all be already have our uh, finished edge and everything will be tucked inside so we'll we'll get to that next but right now we're going to pin the edges and we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch our half an inch along each one of the edges left and right as well as pinning together the center neckline because that also needs to be sealed once we turn this right side out. The only thing that is left open is the bottom here and the two open edges that we did our folding on in the previous step.
The pockets on this garment couldn't be any simpler. They are um, a simple kind of an oval pocket that is a side seam pocket. So simple to add to any garment if you follow these simple instructions. Um, and they're very well written in the pattern as well. But earlier, when we were doing all of our interfacing and prep work, I put interfacing where the pocket will be on the wrong side of the garment's front and back pieces. And so what we're going to do now is take each one of the pockets, and there's four, and we're gonna pin them to the right side of the front and the back piece. I like to just match my dots here using a pin. And on the top and the bottom. And then what I'm going to do for each of the four sides, so the front two sides and the back two sides, I'm going to take it to my serger and I'm gonna finish the edges of the fabric to make clean finished edges before I sew my side seams together. And it just makes it so much easier to have a finished edge. And so what I'm gonna do is serge and then come back and turn our pocket and I guess, do you call it under stitching <laughs> or top stitching so that I have a really nice finish to where the inside of the pocket will be entered, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do and I'll show you what it looks like when we're back. Our pockets are now attached and I'm going to press the pocket away from our little stitch line here, which was 3 eighths of an inch away from the side seam. And I'm going to understitch that just so that the, it lays flat against the seam and everything will be ready for us to stitch the back to the front of the garment and we'll outline the entire side, including the pocket and then down to the hem. And so that's what we're going to do is finish our pockets, understitch right along the edge, pin the front and the back together. And now the garment is gonna take some shape. to do 
is we're going to go back to the yoke and we need to do a couple of things. First of all, um, the yoke now has the front and back sewn together and the, what we're considering the outside is folded at the edges here and at the back. And so what we're going to do now is something that's a little confusing when you think about it, because we normally put right sides together with right sides. Um, but with this particular yoke, the finished edge, which is what we already folded under and pressed, is the outside. And so what we're going to do is actually stitch the right side, which is the inside of the yoke, to the wrong side of our dress. And um, here's what I do. And actually, I should step back for a second, is in the instructions, the first thing that we need to do in order to add our yoke to the dress is we're going to add gathering stitches on the front two shoulders. Then, I should say front shoulders, there are two, <laughs> and the back, because there is slight gathering along the shoulder and in the center of the back. So I have already run two lines of basting stitches in those places. And I don't start gathering my, my stitches until I sort of know what I have to deal with. And so I will match my center V, which I already snipped when I cut out my yoke pieces on the fold, to the center seam of the back piece of the dress. And um, I just basically pin down my seam allowance to make sure that it doesn't come up in the middle when I'm piecing. And then I go all the way over to the edge now remember, um, I didn't do every single step throughout this uh, tutorial. And right before we're adding our yoke on, you should have already finished your armhole sleeve or armhole edge by simply turning your fabric over twice, a quarter of an inch each time, pressing and then top stitching. That is all we do with this simple rounded sleeve opening. Okay, so that's already finished. So now what we need to do is we're going to line up the very edge of the back piece of the yoke with our finished sleeve edge. Now, also know that we're going to be stitching underneath the piece. We wanna move back the folded edge of the yoke on this other folded piece, okay? Because we don't want to get that in any of the stitching. So we're going to move that back. And I just simply use the point of the pin to keep that out of the way. And then I start pinning over to where the gathering stitches are supposed to start. So I kind of have to, I always want to figure out how much ease do I need to add in? Or how much gathering do I need to add into this top? before simply taking the time to do it. Um, half the time I've done this before where I start gathering up the stitches and I've done way too much and I have to take it all back out again. Um, so <laughs> lessons learned. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the other side here and line that up, knowing that you're going to be flipping this over. So we wanna have it line up really nicely there and place a pin in there, again, keeping the folded outer yoke out of the way. Okay, and now I'm gonna keep pinning towards the center until I find that first spot where we need to gather. And remember there are tailor's marks to, to know exactly where we're supposed to start and stop the gathering and it is right there and I've got those all lined up. So the next thing we're gonna do is start gathering. And I don't know if you can see, but there are, cause it's really, it's really, really dark. 
um, in here, but there are two little areas that need to be gathered up. It's not a lot of gathering um, and it really results in a very nice center back to the garment. Okay, so then I work from the back side of, of my gathers and simply take both of the gathers in my hand and pull. And um, it'll pull up really easily. And then you just want to level it out and kind of spread it out over that opening ever so slightly to make sure that there are no additional puckers or space in between the two pins. Kind of roll that through there. And then sometimes I have to pull it all the way back again, holding onto it all at the same time and get it just evened out, okay? And just whatever method works for you to do that and just try not to get any puckers in there because we want gathers. And then once you feel comfortable, I put a couple pins in there just to keep it from not moving at all and then work on the next side and do the exact same thing. And when we're done with this, what we're going to do is go to our sewing machine and stitch our half inch seam allowance. So we're stitching that yoke to the back of the dress. Um, and I like this part of it because it's really, we're just sort of finishing it all up now um, the sleeve edges are finished and the yoke piece here will be a good finish. There we go. So that, you know, when I learned how to do, to, to sew years and years and years ago, just all the different things and you, you learn as you go. Um, but I always was taught, you're probably going to think I'm kind of funny here, but I was taught to put a pin there, wrap your threads around <laughs> the pin for just a couple of twists, just to keep them out of the way so they don't move on you. And then finish pinning. There we go, keep this even now. We don't want any puckers. And okay, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch half inch seam allowance from edge to edge and trim this down just a little bit, turn it the other way. We'll show you how to do this next, but I wanna just kind of explain it, that the top now will be turned. We're gonna press that seam towards the facing. So we're gonna tuck it up inside that facing, and then we're gonna come back and top stitch that down. It's and time to press. So I am going to press the seam that we just created on the back yoke up a little bit. Just kind of get that a little bit flat and I'm gonna bypass these gathers and just do both sides. There we go. And now, there, I'm gonna give you two different options here. I'm just gonna do this the simple way and follow the pattern instructions, which is just to simply pin along this edge, because really what you've done now is finish the entire back yoke and we're gonna to top stitch. So if I take my pins and I'm just gonna start from the left side because that's the side I'm gonna to top stitch starting with. Um, and I'm just gonna pin following right along that stitch line as if it had been stitched in place already and keep everything flat as you go and just make sure that it's staying smooth it's a little bit of um, adjustments that you might have to make and maybe the linen also causes a little bit of that because linen has a little bit of movement and shifting because of the loose weave of it so of the linen itself, um, where you won't find that same feeling if you're working with rayon um, or a, a tighter woven cotton even. So what we're just trying to do here is keep this flat 
and not pin it to my ironing board cover <laughs> along the way. But the other option that I have for you, which is what I what I actually did on the um, black version here, is I I took fusible web and ran it along the inside of my folded piece. So I actually took, because I didn't want to run it along the gathers, I took it and I pressed it on the wrong side of my yoke piece all the way along, peeled off the second side because both sides of fusible web are fusible and then laid and positioned the fold right where I'm doing it now with the pins and pressed it in place. If you use that, um, it's like a quarter inch to three eighths inch fusible web. If you use that, you don't have to do any of the pinning and worry that anything will be shifted. Um, but this time I just wanted to do it with the, with the um, pins this, this time to see how it turned out. So uh, make sure that your seam is inside, tucked inside that fold on both sides before you start your top stitching. I'm gonna do one more pin here. Or you could clip the edge as well if you have a, um, if you use Wonder Clips. I do, I just don't have them sitting right here for this project. I wasn't even thinking about that. Okay, so now I have this pinned all the way across and I'm going to top stitch just close, as close and as straight as I can to the folded edge. And mine ends up being about an eighth of an inch. I follow a certain spot every single time I top stitch on my, the foot, the presser foot that I use on, on my Juki. And so I have this one spot in mind every single time um, when my needle is in a certain position. And so find that on your sewing machine. Just find that spot that you like to use every single time, knowing that you're going to get an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, or whatever it happens to be, but it's consistent throughout the entire garment that you're making. And that's the one thing that I do every single time. I did it on my edges for my, um, for my sleeves and for the pockets and everything. So I'm gonna go stitch this up and then we're going to turn this and do the same thing on the front two shoulders. So the front two yokes, we're doing it the exact same way. We're going to gather, pin, top stitch, and we'll be done with the top of the garment. Then we just have one step left, which is the hem. The back turned out beautiful, absolutely beautiful. <laughs> so now we're going to turn this so that the right side of the dress is on the outside. And we're going to follow the exact same steps for attaching, let me get this turned around here. Okay, so this is the front of the garment right here. So there's, there's our V and right back here is the back yoke, okay? So now we have our unfinished edge here that we're going to sew, and that's the right side of the yoke. You know, I should just call it inside, <laughs> inside. And we're going to pin it just like we did the other to the wrong side of the front of the garment. And I will tell you the one thing that I did on the last one that I don't want to repeat is that there is a little bit of a difference here when you are positioning the yoke onto the front of the garment. We want to make sure that the, the join is flush. And so work with that a little bit because sometimes if you put it too far over, if the yoke is extending too far and you stitch it down, you're going to move the yoke beyond the front edge. I guess that's the sleeve, but of the sleeve, and you're going to see kind of a join. So play with this a little bit and just make sure that it's inside so that when you do flip this around, 
that the yoke is flush with the edge of your seam or your sleeve seam. And the same thing in the front over here where our facing is, we wanna make sure that we don't extend it too far over when we're stitching. And you can always, if you don't like how it looks, take it out. And I know we don't like to take things out, but definitely go ahead and take it out and fix it um, because we really want it to be right. Okay, so now we're gonna match our notches here so that we know how much gathering we need to do. We'll match them on both sides and gather that up. So this has a much bigger area to gather here, okay? And so just start gathering and do the same steps on both sides and we will have our top finished. We have to find these threads. Okay, time to gather and move it across as you go. It's that time again. We're going to take this up onto our, our iron, ironing situation here and clip any of the excess threads that are that are still here. I don't remove the basting stitches unless they're showing on the outsides. I just leave them there. It's like extra, <laughs> extra security inside your seam. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just make sure that everything kind of looks good. The edges look tidy. I think the second time around for me is, is even a little bit better. This is wonderful. Okay, so I'm gonna press, press this down without, without getting those gathers in here. Okay, and then this time I am gonna simply pin again. I'm not, I'm not gonna get the fusible out. So I'm just gonna pin this in place And then I'll stitch, I have to think about this a moment. I'm gonna be going the other way. Um, so I'm gonna work my pins backwards. So it's gonna look kind of funny because I'm gonna stitch along the edge and top stitch from this corner or this side into the center here. I don't wanna to have to change my sewing machine because I want to have the exact same width on my top stash, my top stitching from the edge of the fold. So I'm just always going to go the same direction. I think that should be enough there. Okay, and so then we need to do the same thing on the other shoulder here. And I love these little ironing platforms here. I just love them because you can do so many things. I couldn't have done this with that tabletop there. And I don't have my other iron ironing board set up in this little studio area. We've been trying to rearrange our office to have more space to share our projects and things. This one is too bulky. I'm going to move that over there. Um, so you're probably seeing different things in the background every time you see one of our educational um, videos. And we're just trying to get everything situated here in the office. And so things are changing and trying to make more space in the front of our warehouse for retail um, so that we can open up our retail area one more time which will be great so okay so i'm going to pin this in place here and i know these pins are going the wrong direction but i will make it work okay 
to the sewing machine to top stitch and then I think I'm gonna try it on before I actually do any hemming and I know the rule is basically you're supposed to let your garment drape overnight or two days or whatever it happens to be it's like curating your garments um, but put it on a mannequin if you have a your body mannequin at home or hang it up because um, I guess it's supposed to just let the fabric relax um, for a little bit of time so that you can really see how the garment will hang on you and I think I might do that I think I'll just put this on see what it looks like and then um, do the hemming later now I will tell you um, so you don't need to wait for me to do the hem is what I do on every single one of my garment hems and it doesn't seem to matter what the fabric is I truly like to serge the edge all the way around once I have made any adjustments that I need to and then I press it up and I press it this I believe this pattern is an inch or an inch to a quarter or an inch and a quarter um, I am going to yes I'm gonna uh, press it up an inch and it gives it a nice weight especially for the linen I think it'll be a really really nice weight um, with a thicker hem and I just stitch all the way around now we do have a little um, kick pleat in the back of our dress so we'll finish that up really really simply by matching up our edges and top stitching and this will just make it a really really beautiful finish to the dress so that's how I'm going to finish it um, and I'll be back in a little bit and we'll do a little bit of a summary and talk about the next project. Okay. <laughs> I really love this dress and I, um, I just finished it and I just actually scrambled and changed and put it on and I still do have to hem it. So, um, I'm not showing you anything below here. Um, but I just love it. So I have another really 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 great summer dress and you can move in it and I love how it just finished and everything so um, again okay let's talk just a little bit about the pattern and um, thank you for following along and um, hopefully uh, you see how simple this particular dress is to make and it's the fear dress by Lisa and company and it takes two yards of fabric up to a size 16 and then it takes three because with our 58 inch wide uh, batik linen we can't get the 16 18 and 20 um, from a side by side top and back um, across the fabric so we need two lengths of the garment um, in order to um, have enough fabric for those three sizes. So um, I did want to let you know that. So that's why there's a difference in our fashion duo that we have on our website. Um, it stops right at that 14, um, size 14. So, um, but, um, so the things that we kind of focused on today, um, actually it was multiple days, uh, were mainly the yoke. I really wanted to show you how the yoke was put together and how simple it is to finish the sleeve at the same time and the arm opening here, as well as the pockets, the simplest pockets imaginable. And I was one that always used to um, avoid the pockets. <laughs> well, I no longer avoid pockets and i am really been challenging myself to do a lot more with um, things that I used to think were difficult and pockets are simple. Uh, so go ahead and absolutely add this style. You know something, save your patterns. Know which patterns have what pockets and what uh, features on it that you can use to enhance or as they say, hack your own patterns that are uh, needing a pocket, for example. So it's a simple thing. Use your pattern, use your instructions, measure where you want it. The pocket here starts right as my hip starts and ends right kind of in the middle of my hip. And so that's where this pocket is and um, probably could be a little bit bigger. 
<laughs> so if you want to make them bigger, make them bigger. But the opening and how it's finished at the opening is um, simple and standard. So the I don't think there was anything else that was very complicated with this dress at all. So enjoy it and um, give us any comments below. Tell us um, what you like, didn't like, if you have any questions. And hopefully you're following us on our Instagram and Facebook pages. We're doing a little bit more with Pinterest to share our ideas of garment sewing and quilting for that matter. And um, our fashion duo is the best way to buy if you don't have the pattern already and you're interested in our uh, batik linen. It's the best way to buy a project because you receive the yardage that you want and you can select any fabric. You receive the pattern and you receive the interfacing um, all in one price and it's all discounted. So if you were to buy them individually, um, you're going to spend some more money. So consider that. But if you already have linen at home or another fabric, definitely get the pattern. You should have this in your arsenal. And hopefully in a couple of weeks, I will make the top because I think if it fits like this as a dress, then um, can you imagine all these tops for the summer? I think it will be spectacular. Um, and I'm also going to try it out a rayon. I think this would be a really, really great dress or top for rayon. So anyway, thank you so much for following. Hopefully you will like our video, subscribe, and follow us along on our next little journey. Um, see you next time.